was awesome. Kind of put me to shame, I think. But <laughs> praise God for what the Lord is doing in our children's ministry. It's wonderful. Well, we just want to thank all of you for coming this morning to Oasis. If this is your first time, we welcome you. And let's just give them a hand clap and welcome this morning. And then I'm happy to share with you Pastor Rob. And before we get started this morning, we just have a couple of announcements we want to make. And I know Ashley will probably give them at the end of the service also. But Tuesday night, everybody say Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Is the ladies... Uh, women's Fellowship. <laughs> I, I messed y'all up on that one. <laughs> Tuesday night Tuesday is the ladies, the ladies. Women's, women's Fellowship. fellowship. So men, you can't come. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but we have food, fun, and fellowship at our ladies' meeting. And uh, this ladies' meeting, we will be celebrating our Christmas night and so we are playing a game where we bring five one dollar gifts and we have gift exchange and it's so fun we just have a, a good time and we just invite all of you ladies to come and enjoy it on a fun tuesday night it's at seven o'clock seven o'clock on tuesday night and you'll have a blast i guarantee you our ladies are a lot of fun yes give my hand clap Okay, and also Friday night, this Friday night is our fellowship, Christmas fellowship dinner for the whole body, for all of us, and we want to invite all of you to come. That's this Friday night at 7 o'clock, amen? Yes. amen. So we just, uh, we, we, uh, we have food, fun, and fellowship. We like to eat and we like to have fun, amen? amen. Everything we do is fun and food. So we just invite you all out to come to that. Praise God. Praise God. Turn it over to Pastor this time. Praise God. Um, we're all looking forward to, to the fellowship. Amen. Yeah. The fellowship strengthens us all. It strengthens yes. this body. Amen. So we would really encourage you to come. Amen. Amen. Um, ask you to look at your neighbor. Point at your neighbor. Smile at your neighbor and say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word. This, day. this day. And I declare, I declare I'm, ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, Are you ready? To, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word. This, day. this day? And I declare, I declare I'll never, I'll never, never ever, ever, ever be the same again, again in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the rest of this service. Father, I thank you that the eyes of our understanding are light before the hope of your calling. I thank you for revelation knowledge this day. I thank you that the word of the Lord will have free course in our midst. I thank you for strong utterance and strong anointing this day. And that your people make a strong drawing on the anointing of God. I thank you for answers coming in your presence this day. Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak through me, preach through me. I yield myself as a vessel this day. Help me to say exactly what it should say and help me to leave off anything I need to leave off. Help me to say things the way I need to say them this day. Father, I thank you that signs and wonders follow your word. And we are preaching and teaching your word this day. And so we expect and believe for signs and wonders to follow this word this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> Hallelujah. I ask you if you will to get your Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter 4. Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians 4 and 29. Hallelujah. Those children, that was awesome this morning. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. I mean, goodness. Um, Ephesians 4 and 29, you know the way I do it, I'll read it in several different translations. We'll start off with just a couple different. Um, this is the Amplified. <clears throat> it says, let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. But only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. 
in the expanded Bible, Ephesians 4, 29, don't say anything that will hurt others. Don't let any rotten, unhealthy word come from your mouth. But only say what is helpful and good to make others stronger. Build others up and meet according to their needs. Then what you say will do good and give grace and will be a gift to those who listen to you. Now, all of our words, all of us, and our words should minister grace to the hearers. It should minister peace. When I say that word grace, when we're having a conversation back and forth, it should just be a peaceful conversation. But peace should be ministered no matter what we're talking about. Everything that we say should minister peace to that other person. And we should have it in our thought process that we're trying to edify that other person. Edify, to build up, to charge, to strengthen, to construct like a building. So we're trying to put something in them that will help them get through life's challenges. And in our conversation, we should magnify God's goodness with our words. We shouldn't magnify the faults of others with our words. Everybody say amen or amen. Amen. Okay. Now let's uh, let me let me show you how this works. Okay. Everybody raise your hand. Okay. Now this is all of us. Now we put it down. We all just admitted we're guilty. Okay. That way that that part is completely done with. That was all of us. Every one of us. And and this isn't um, somebody. You know, it, it's it's all of us. We're learning this together. There are truths that that we're learning. Amen. But a lot of times, all the time, it's our flesh that wants to complain. It's our flesh that wants to gossip. It's our flesh that wants to speak evil of someone else. Amen. And it's the devil who gets all the glory when we do. Amen. Same scripture, Ephesians 4, 29, and this one's in the King James. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use in edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers. There again, edify, to build, to establish, to uplift, to encourage. One of the definitions I heard years ago is to charge like a battery. That's what edify is. You're charging it just like you would charge a battery. Whatever we do, whatever we say, we should give God the glory. And when I say God, give God the glory, it means give God the credit. That's right. Give Him the credit. If anything good happened in your life, give God the credit. You know, you may not even know where it came from. If it's good, it came from God. Give Him the credit. Amen. Let there be no doubt. So in our speech, give Him the credit. Colossians 3 and 17 says, Whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence on Him, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Talk about something good. Give God the glory. Edify God and others in our conversation and communication. Now, uh, Friday night, we had the seniors meeting. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the seniors meeting. Seniors is for 50, 50 and older. And um, we all, a lot of people come. A lot of people won't come to the seniors meeting. And the reason they won't come is because they won't admit they're seniors. <laughs> and so sometimes I actually have to get people 50 and over to stand up in the church service so that everybody can see who they are. And, and then I tell them about the senior service, because otherwise they won't admit they're a senior anyway. Amen. But uh, we had the uh, seniors meeting Friday night. It's power team is what we've actually, the name of the team is. And it's the power team. And we had it at my brother Rick and sister-in-law Helen's house. I know I just, okay, right in the middle, okay. And uh, it was a blast. And you know, what I'm teaching on today about edifying I believe everything in that meeting, everything that was said and everything that was done, you, you just left that meeting edified. You left there, I, I, I can't describe it, it's one of the best times ever. And I know I was thinking, I was actually thinking of the early church when we were pulling out and leaving in our car that night. I was thinking this is how their church meetings were. It was just like this. Uh, Chester, who comes, and uh, Chester and Mary, he uh, he did a condensed version of the um, the the well the, the Christmas story. He did a, a Reader's Digest condensed version of that, just a little short, three or four minute thing. And then um, then we did started doing the twelve days of Christmas, and we're trying to figure out what what goes on each day. 
and everybody's singing, you know, the wrong thing on a lot of it. And we're, you know, Chester has a little list, and he's trying to, you know, get us all going on the same page. And you just talk about something that was full of unity, full of harmony. Um, not singing perfectly, <laughs> but it was just, it was wonderful. And I mean, it, there was just, the atmosphere was charged with giving God the glory. Amen. And I think that's the best example that I could come up with. And I'm believing that. I know they always do that at the ladies' meeting. And I know Friday night, this Friday night, we're going to do that here again, and it's going to be a blast. Amen. And um, when we talk in our daily conversation, it should bring glory to God. Amen. Our speech should always have things in it that we're thankful for. Every time we complain about things, okay, now, we already said everybody's guilty. We all complain at one time or another. We, we, we still are challenged with that, right? Yeah. But every time we complain about things, it actually gives the devil glory. Yeah. Every time our speech gets negative, it gives the devil glory. Every time we gripe, every time we bellyache, we give the enemy glory. And God should be getting the glory all the time in our speech. Well, Pastor, you don't know how bad I've had it. Well, when we give voice to it, the devil applauds because we're magnifying him. In testimonies, sometimes... We spend 90% of the time, not, not here, I haven't seen that here, but in testimonies in Christian churches sometimes, 90% of the time is spent telling what the devil did. Right. And 10% of the time is telling what God did. Right. And actually, you know, in some of the testimonies you're like, where's God in this? I heard all this bad stuff, where's God? Right. Every time we talk about someone in a negative way, it gives glory to the devil. Every time we repeat anything we heard that isn't good, it isn't positive, it isn't uplifted, we give glory to the devil. Amen. Don't talk about the faults of others. You know, truthfully, if we really want to talk about somebody's faults, we can talk about our own. Amen. And I've got news for you. we got more than enough to do talking about our own faults than somebody else's faults. Amen. Well, Pastor, I'm just... I'm just being real, so-and-so, they're messed up. <laughs> then why are you telling it? Yeah. Why are we telling Well, the devil is using us in those situations to hurt them and other people right. in the body of Christ yeah. and outside the body of Christ. Yeah. And actually, it's called slander. Yeah. All right. In God's eyes, right. it's called slander. Yeah. But pastor, it's true. So it didn't slander. They're guilty of it. Does it edify anyone? Does it build anyone else up? No. Does it build somebody up or does it tear somebody down? I was talking to a minister one day. This is 25 years ago. I was talking to a minister. And um, I told him how I admired this other minister. Um, he was an older gentleman and been in ministry for years and years and um, I would just tell him I, I just, he just stood out to me always and this man that I'm sitting with, this other minister I wasn't a minister at that time he said something just took me totally off guard, he totally derogatory slammed that guy to the to quick and I've got my mouth open and I mean he's like well he said uh, you know God forgives after he said it all and threw all that trash on me, then he said, well, you know, God forgives. And that was 25 years ago. Oh, my God. I didn't need to hear that. That was trash. That was the enemy trying to, to dis honor someone that had been forgiven of something for 25 years. God had already forgot it. Amen. You know, I, I wasn't very bold back then. I'm, I'm bolder now. Yeah. I wasn't very bold back then, and I didn't know what to do in that situation, but I just kept my mouth shut. Um, which is always a good thing to do. Yeah. Never agree or, or, or get in the, the situation. Yeah. But um, and sometimes we, we're all guilty of that. 
But uh, what I should have said is when someone says something that's derogatory and you just can't get up and walk away, which is a good, good statement, get up and walk away. But if you're in a position you can't, drop your head, bow your head, and say, would you please lead us in prayer today? <laughs> That slandering thing ain't. It's, it's going to be b- 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 Jesus. B- 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 <laughs> when we say something evil to somebody else, true or not, we're playing into the devil's hands. Amen. He was keeping something going that had been forgiven for 25 years. He's keeping it going. That's the devil's business. That's right. Romans 14 and 19 in the Common English Bible. So let's strive for the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up. Complaining. How many of you ever heard complaining? We already know everybody's complaining. Yes. Complaining is praising the devil and giving him glory. It's like bragging on him. Every time we complain, we're bragging on the devil. I heard this minister say uh, many years ago, he said he was a pastor of a church and he said one church member prayed for her husband for years and years and years and she'd come up and he'd, he'd you know, lay hands on her and pray or whatever and uh, he finally told her, he said uh, nothing's going to happen with your husband and she was like dumbfounded, she said like what, what do you mean? He said because you go home after coming to church and having prayer and you go home and you tell your husband, unsafe husband, you go home and tell him every problem in the church. You go tell him everything that where you think you were offended by so and so or this yeah. one or that one or this is not being yeah. run right in the church. That's not being run right. And you find all the fault that you yeah. could possibly find and you tell him every word of it yeah. and, and he doesn't come. Yeah. You're keeping him from coming because yeah. of your speech. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He, he told her her husband knew more about the problems in the church than he did. And he was the pastor. I thought that was pretty good. Amen. Not only did God not get the glory, but her speech kept her husband away from church. She was praying for his salvation, and then he would go to church with her. But her fault finding with everything that she thought was wrong with the church, and from everyone she felt had done her wrong, it kept him away and it didn't please the Lord. It grieves the Spirit of God. Amen. She was doing the enemy's work for him. Amen. And the enemy was getting the glory. Amen. Because of her words, the work of God was hindered in her husband's life. We need to focus more on what God's done. Amen. On what God is doing. Amen. You want an example of a great testimony? Of God and what He has done. Listen, listen to Alicia's testimony. Wasn't that Wednesday night? Yeah. Yeah. From the Wednesday night service, um, when Pastor Sharon was ministering, Alicia came up and gave her testimony about their family going through this. It was a huge attack against their family, against yeah. Sean, yeah. trying to kill him. Yeah. And uh, but all she magnified over and over was how good God had been, yeah. the Amen. miracle that God had done. Yeah. Her testimony about. Bashar's miracle brought much glory to God and everybody was amazed that God did this, God did that the church was wonderful in this I mean it was just everything was she focused, she magnified God in that testimony Amen said God raised Bashar up God had him walking, God had him talking Matthew 12 35 through 37 this is King James a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And the evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Same scriptures in contemporary English. Good people bring good things out of their hearts. But evil people bring evil things out of their hearts. I promise you on the day of judgment... Everyone will have to account for every, get this, careless word they have spoken. Yeah. We've said a lot of careless yeah. words. Yeah. I, I've said too many careless words. 
And on that day, we'll be told that they are either innocent or guilty because of the things that they have said. We all want to do and say things that are pleasing to the Lord, things that will bring Him glory. And you and I can feel it in our spirits when we say wrong things. We lose the peace. You have a peace and, 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 and you're talking about something and that peace lifts. And you know there's, there's been a line crossed. You said something wrong or somebody else has said something wrong. And, and, and we've got to stop. When that, when that peace starts to lift, stop. Get off the phone. Stop. You know, do something else. If you're talking to somebody, tell them you've got to go. I mean, don't, don't continue. Amen. If we do continue and keep doing that, our spirits will no longer be sensitive to the Spirit of God who's trying to, to bring correction to us. Amen. We won't be sensitive to negative things or slander anymore. Wrong talking could become a lifestyle and we won't even notice it. Our speech should minister grace to God and to other people. Some people seem to have a special gift of fault finding. Don't look at your neighbor right now. <laughs> but it's not a gift. And it doesn't bring God any glory. Amen. It brings the enemy glory. Amen. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If we're judgmental, it'll come out of our mouth. It'll spew out in condemning words and slanderous words and words of criticism and words that are fault-finding, words that place blame. Put it to the Philippians 4 test. Is it praiseworthy? If it is, tell it and tell it and tell it. Bashar got a miracle. Bashar got a miracle. There, there's miracles going on. You know, a lot of times people say this in, in the body, and I've said it before, but I, I don't say it again. We say, you know, one day God's going to do some amazing miracles. Excuse me. Wake up. Smell the coffee. God's already been doing a miracle. That's a walking, talking miracle of Bashar. It's, it's been miracles of healings of cancer. There's been miracles of healing of people that were in just... Bad, bad shape. And God raised them up. He's not going to do it. He's already doing it. And we need to be telling it. That's right. Mm. Finally, brethren, Philippians 4 to 8. What sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And I'm going to give you a paraphrase. Talk about these things. Yes. Amen. Amen. Same scripture in the message. <clears throat> and, and it says, Summing it all up, friends, I'd say to you, and we're coming to a close, I'd say to you, do your best by filling your minds and meditating on things true and noble and reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse, Put into practice what you learned from me. Amen. I like that. Yes. Talk about something that you're thankful for. Amen. That brings glory to God. That acknowledges Him. How many of you in here have got something that you're thankful to God for? Yes. I'm telling you, if you're born again, you've got something to be thankful for. I'm not saying you're not going through a rough time. I'm not saying, you know, times haven't ever been bad. That's not what I'm saying. But in the middle of those bad times, God is still good. And He's still blessing. And He's still helping. And He's still healing. And He's still making a way when there seems to be no way. God is good all the time. Acknowledge God is good all the time. He's not just good when we're up here. He's good when we're down here. Right. He's Amen. good in the middle. Hallelujah. And we need to have it coming out of our mouth. Well, you don't know what God did for me. You don't know what God, how He helped me, how He blessed me, how He touched my mind. You don't know what God did for me. Hmm. It brings glory to God when we start talking about what He's doing. And we encourage each other and edify each other and build each other up. Yeah. Romans 14 and 19, still coming to a close. Let us therefore follow after things which make for peace and things where we may edify another. There's some things and some conversations that we know there's not going to be peace about. Amen. Don't, if you know somebody has a different political 
opinion than you, and we all have our own political opinions, don't discuss politics. You're not, God's not going to get any glory out of it. Hello. You're not going to change their mind. All you're going to do is get into strife. So just, just don't touch that. You know, football is a good thing. Amen. But there's some people that don't need to talk about football. <laughs> because they, they get crazy with it. You know, they'll go out and slash your tires on your car because their their team lost. Or, or they'll, they'll paint your car a certain color. Whoa, 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 you're a little too involved. This is a game. This is a game. This is a good thing. You can get a lot of glory out of it. But don't get crazy with it. You know? Don't get beat up because your team didn't win. Amen. And you had to put your mouth into it. Thank you very much. Amen. That was good. Amen. <laughs> Colossians 4 in the message, and this is verse 5 and 6, says, Be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring out the best in others in a conversation. Not to put them down, not cut them out. Yes. Same scripture, Colossians 4 and 6 in the NIV translation says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. And the last scripture is Hebrews 3 and 13. But continually encourage, this is in the Amplified, but continually encourage one another every day, as long as it's called today. So our job in the body of Christ is to edify each other in love. Our job is to just encourage each other every day. Build each other up. Call somebody up and edify them. Build them up. Tell them what God's been doing in your life. Tell them how God's using them to bless. Amen. Tell them Amen. something good. Amen? Amen. Yes. I'm going to ask y'all to stand.